hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Before we start talking about a stop point, I want to go over two words which are quite important for the stop point to make sense. And those are species and population. Species, we covered in year 11. And what a species was, was if we have two organisms that have a lot of shared characteristics that are quite similar. And, not just the shared characteristics, they also can have fertile offspring. If this happens to be, so if we look at two organisms, and they can have fertile offspring, and they have shared characteristics, then they are members of the same species. And that's a species, so if they have fertile offspring and they are, have shared characteristics, that's they are they're organisms of the same species. Whereas a population is just all of this, all of the members of the species in any given area, all of the members of the species, and I, what I mean by that is, for example, we have this huge collection of fish here. These are all the same fish, right? So one of these fish might belong to certain species of fish. That's the species, and the population is all of them together, right? So we have you know, lots of the same species of fish. That's the population. Why is that important? Because that word population is used in the dot point. The dot point itself says identify how the following current reproductive techniques may alter the genetic composition of a population. And these are artificial insemination, artificial pollination, and cloning. Right? So we have to talk about how it changes the composition, genetic composition of a population. Right, so first I'll talk about artificial pollination. So this one's the first one I'll talk about. And it says identify, so we just have to say how they change the actual genetic composition. So artificial pollination is first. And pollen pollen has something to do with uh, pollination has something to do with pollen. And pollen we find in plants. So we find pollen in plants. So an artificial means sort of man. So man pollination. So it's not normally, normally it happens by wind, but man or humans are doing this pollination. And how that works is we have in a flower, we have the stigma and we have the antha. The antha is like the male sperm and the stigma is like the male, uh, female ovaries. Right? We have it all in the same plant. So we can actually, we can have this plant Fertilize, fertilizing itself. Uh, if the if it's pollen going here, then it's fertilized. But artificial pollination means we, what we do is we cut out the plant's antha, so there's no antha, which means it can't self-pollinate. And then a human will take, for example, a tiny bit of a syringe or stick with the pollen on it from a plant that we want to pollinate it. To. So it might be pollen from a plant that we want it to pollinate that plant, and then we put those pollen into the plant. And now we have, it's basically we have controlled which pollen goes into this plant. And that's, if you remember Mendel's experiments, he used self-pollination to make sure he would breed a green homozygous with a green homozygous, right? So he made sure that the, both the parents were what he wanted to be by doing self-pollination. So it's a controlled way that we can make sure that a certain plant breeds with a different type of plant. Right? That we don't have random wind doing it or it's not doing it itself, we have it under control. And how does that change the genetic composition of a population? Well we're only gonna we're only gonna have a very we're gonna have similar similar plants. All the plants will be quite similar, especially if we want to have a certain plant that has certain characteristics. We'll take the pollen from that plant and put it in all the other plants. So we're going to have similar plants with similar genetics. It is an example of sexual reproduction. So the actual offspring won't be identical. It'll be what we want it to be, but it won't be identical because it's sexual reproduction. So it'll be a cross between the parent flower and the so both the parent flowers. But overall, Diversity, so genetic diversity, that's the main point. Genetic diversity will decrease. So we'll have less and less variation 
because we control the process. It's not random anymore. Genetic diversity decreases. But that's for artificial pollination. And you should remember that, you know, for example, one way we can do it is just, you know, we remove the anther and then we cross, we pollinate it ourselves with, uh, with putting the pollen of the plant we want to have into another plant. You don't actually have to remember the process, but you need to remember what it is, it's sex reproduction, that it decreases the genetic diversity. And the reason why is because we can control which traits we select, and we will usually only select traits that we want to have, and all the other ones will be lost. They might be useful in general for the plant, but we don't like them, so we won't be selecting them. Uh, this next part is artif artificial insemination. Now, the word semination comes from semen. So that's the same as sperm. And insemination means that we put sperm into something. Now, artificial, again, that means we have it's man-controlled. So man-controlled, this is man made or man controlled. In this case, so I mean one example would be let's say this here is there's sperm in here and this sperm comes from a bull. And this bull is known to produce really good, you know, cows that make lots of milk. So we collect the, the sperm is bull and then put it into all of the cows, right? So this might be the ovaries of a cow. And Thereby, we can, again, same with artificial pollination, it's controlled. We will make sure we select the traits we want to have, and all the other ones might be lost. So, and one way we do that, we pump the sperm into, so we pump it, there might only be one male, right? One bull. So all the sperms come from one bull, and we give that one bull to all of the cows, and they will have offspring, which will all have similar characteristics of the original bull. So it's controlled, and even if, so for example, if the, some of the offspring are different, so if some of the offspring are not what we want, then we won't use their sperm, if it's a bull, we won't use their sperm for the next generations, which means over time, we're more and more selective, and eventually we'll have just cows and bulls, which are ideal for what we want them to be. Right? So it's very controlled, and similar to the plants, it will um, some plant, have similar animals. So usually when it comes to artificial insemination, plants don't have semen, only animals do. So it usually is to do with animals. Similar animals with similar genetics. So most of the animals will have quite similar genetics. Not identical, but similar genetics. And it's again, it's sexual reproduction. Even though we're controlling it, it's not asexual because we still have one mother and one father um, sexual reproduction. Which means there is some diversity, but overall it's decreased. Which is again that main point: genetic diversity decreases. Now, with the last one, we talk about cloning. Now, with cloning, it's we have identical offspring, and I'm not going to go over this in detail because I'm going to cover this in the next video of how we actually clone. But with cloning, we basically we take the cells of a sheep we want to clone and put it into an egg, and thereby we produce lots of sheep which are identical to the original sheep. And, and don't worry, we're going to go over this in detail in the next video. But idea of cloning is, again, it's controlled. We choose which, which actual clone we want to, which sheep we want to clone. Now, the problem is that it's actually, it produces identical, identical plants and animals. So these are not similar, they are identical to the parent. Identical plants and animals. And this is how we often do it when it comes to animals. But you should also know that, for example, when it comes to plants, one way we can actually um, clone plants is by having something called a sucker. A sucker, I think it's called a sucker shoot, which grows, so if there's a main tree, then there'll be some sucker shoots coming off it and we can grab those and and plant them in a different area and they'll grow to make be the same identical tree we can also use grafting which does the same idea i mean grafting and sucker these just produce identical copies of the parent right so as opposed to artificial pollination which is still they're similar but they're not identical because of sexual reproduction with cloning they're identical because the parent is the same to, as the 
offspring. So we said it's control because we select which ones we want to clone. They have identical plants and animals being produced, so identical from, from their parents. In this case, we consider it to be asexual reproduction because there's no sex involved. And also, the, the actual offspring is identical to the parents. Now, in this case, there's very low, so genetic diversity has definitely been decreased. So genetic diversity refers to how many different types of genes there are in a population, right? And genetic diversity has been decreased significantly with cloning. There's all the same, they're all identical. So for the dot point, identify how the following current reproductive techniques may alter the genetic composition of a population, artificial insemination, artificial pollination and cloning. We said that for all of them, genetic diversity decreases. It'll decrease the most for a population which have all have clones, because all the clones are identical. But for the other ones, they'll still be very much affected, because it's a controlled mechanism where we take the ones we want to take, and thereby ignoring all the other traits, which we might not find good, or which we might not like. Now, again, when it comes to that example here, if we, for example, say this here, you know, this here is a clone, but we've cloned all the other ones. So all the fish here are all clones of this one, right? Then you have no, you have no genetic diversity. You have no genetic diversity because every single fish has the same genes. But if this fish were, you know, this, these might be all maybe the, the, the siblings, the sisters and brothers of this fish, there'd be still quite a bit of genetic diversity because you know, they're, they have different types of chromosomes and alleles in them. So the, the more cloning, the more selection there is, the less genetic diversity, the more natural it is, the more normal the way that everything works, the higher the genetic diversity. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.